Welcome into the Joshua B. Boyd podcast brought to you by family and friends, also viewed on YouTube. Um, today's podcast is about uh, moods and mood therapy and somebody who is very highly recognized and the biggest inspiration of this video, uh, public speaker and author um, David Burns is who I'll be talking about and uh, the experiences that I experienced while learning about moods because I am bipolar and that's why I'm learning about mood therapy and how to better control my moods even though there's a lot more going on to me than just a mood disorder I have other shit going on but like this today like I say in 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 the last podcast I'm here to learn and grow with you guys every video is about something that I am learning about and every video is for you guys to learn and grow with me and that's how this audience is going to become better and stronger and that's that's also how the conversation gets started between me and you the viewer uh the person that's going to engage on the video and and uh maybe bring up a question of your own so feel free to do that feel free to drop a like comment subscribe uh push this video help me out in the algorithms and then uh yeah now that i'm done making that money you know i'm just joking i'm not sponsored um we can move forward um a brief history on my mood disorder is uh, I was diagnosed with manic bipolar one in 2016 or 2017. It was January of 2017 when I was in the hospital, and um, I was going through major highs and major lows in that point in my life. And for many years, coming up towards the hospitalization, and what people don't realize is that a mood disorder can actually lead to psychosis. So that's not what this whole video is about, but that's what that's what happened in my personal situation. So this video is more so for anxiety and depression, and and the mood swings that you go through through that more so than it is about being bipolar because like only one in a thousand people are bipolar yet like i think 250 in a thousand struggle with either anxiety or depression and and that number is much larger so that that's kind of like where i want to attack um at its worst your moods are fluctuating often going from happy to sad or going from scared to even more scared, or going from anxious to even more anxious. Sometimes it's the same mood, and then it elevates to another level. Sometimes it's one mood to the other. So you can go from here to here, or from here to here. One mood, same mood, but worse. One mood, different mood. And I call that, I personally call that, like I didn't get this one from anybody, I didn't get this from from David Burns. But I guess I kind of got it from uh, Gary Vee, but Gary Vee always throws in, always says right hook jab in entrepreneurship. But I say right hook, left hook with mood disorders because you're, it's like I said, it's either the same mood that gets worse or it's from one mood to the other. And so that, that, that's basically what it is that's worse. But like at its best, a mood disorder is just you being stable while dealing with the fact that your moods aren't always the same, but you're always a hundred percent conscious of the fact that this is just part of the illness. And it's like your moods are sometimes very subjective. Like they all oftentimes like your mood has nothing to do with what you're fucking feeling at all. You're just, you're reflecting on how you view, how you feel. Does that make sense? Like you're reflecting how you view your feelings as opposed to reflecting what's happening because sometimes people are in really good situations they're really rich and famous and they're still really sad and that's that's where that comes into play but i don't know i'm gonna skip i'm gonna skip over here to i'm gonna skip over here to phase two hook fucking creating a personal achievement so If you write, if what you write is better than how you feel, you know, cognitive therapy could help. So there's a story about a woman who, whose family was trapped in, um, Holocaust camps during World War II. 
And she was able to get herself out and her kids, but not her husband or other family members. But she got herself out and her kids, and she made it to America, and she became a renowned chef, and she raised her family, and she paid all her bills, and she made everything good, and she lived the American dream, even though every adversity was against her. In that process, she became suicidal in her older age in the United States and ended up in a psychiatric ward for a major depression and a nearly successful suicide attempt. And uh, they tried cognitive therapy on her for the first time. And cognitive therapy was very new at that time. And cognitive therapy to now is now one of the most practiced forms of therapy. So, uh, cogn- cognitive just means thought. A cogn- like cognitive itself, the word, just means a thought process. It's just a fancy word for it. So... In the past, in therapy, when treating anxiety or depression, they always try to change your mood back to a good mood instead of a bad mood. They're always working on, like, your mood shit. But um, with cognitive therapy, you're actually working on the emotion and the goals and the tactics, and you come up with questions that you ask the person. It's like homework for the person that's receiving therapy. So, like, one one question is, think of your achievements. Think about things you've achieved and see if that changes your opinion on yourself. Instead of just getting told you've achieved things. So, they go home and they think about this. This woman from, from that got out of the war, she received this cognitive therapy. And she, she wrote down her achievements that... Uh, she raised a son who became a Harvard graduate. She learned five languages. She became a renowned chef. She raised her kids. She bought a home. <coughs> By the end of it, she couldn't justify why she was suicidal. And a lot of people get that reaction from cognitive therapy. So the book here is called Feeling Good. And it's 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 by... Uh, it's by uh, David Burns, but this book is what inspired the TED Talk that I was watching, and um, I haven't made it all the way through this book yet, but I will tell you that it is a book that's been written for the patient, for the reader, for just a person. It's not doctor to doctor, it's doctor to patient. Sorry, I lost my breath there, and I got slightly emotional there just for a second because because of how this book was introduced to me. So, two years ago was my last hospital visit in the psych ward for my manic bipolar stuff, and then I got my additional diagnosis two years ago of being schizoaffective, and I was going through a lot of my mood disorder stuff in the, the hospital, and, like, you can get a counselor or, like, uh, someone that, like is by your side in the psych ward with you, like a government worker that helps you out. They're like therapists on the go. They show up to the hospital and they're there with you throughout the day for a couple days out of the week. And it's like extra help. And this, this guy never utilized his person. So his person was always there to help him and he never wanted help from him. So I would go over and talk to him instead and and ask him a bunch of questions. And he couldn't officially give me therapy because I wasn't his patient. But he did give me a lot of advice that he could just give me anyway. And the number one reason why he picked out this book for me was because was because he, he realized that he was giving me information that could only be from professional to non-professional. Because we weren't in a professional setting and I wasn't actually his patient. He couldn't give me inner details, but he gave me enough to help, if you know what I mean. And that's exactly how this book helps you. It helps you from the perspective of, like, how you would want a normal person to tell you instead of hearing all the medical jumbo-mumbo that you can't understand. So even though this book is, like, what, 700 pages, it's, like, something that I, that is my goal to make all the way through. 
So that was kind of like the end before the beginning. Um, you know what? Like I have more written down, but I think I'm just going to leave it at that mostly because mental health is a touchy subject and it's not something that I want to talk about for a very long time. And it's something that you probably don't want to hear about for a very long time. Like this, this episode is simply because it's useful, not because it's the most attractive content out there to make. This is the kind of content that just helps people for the sake of helping people. And, um, that's that's what I think I've accomplished already, and I don't want to have any filler content to make it more confusing. So, like, I guess I can do, like, one last recap just to summarize it, and then we're going to end the podcast. So, what's in it for them is is that you're learning mood therapy inspired by public speaker and author David Burns. Most famous for feeling good. Um, at its worst, it, a mood disorder is fluctuation and constant change. At its best, is moderate change that you're relatively just used to. So, cognition is a thought, and thoughts create moods. Depression and anxiety or disordered conditions... Or cognitive behaviors. Remember, create a list of personal achievements. That is, that's your homework from this, is to create your list of personal achievements to see why there, it makes no sense for you to be as down as you are. And I'm going to try it out too, but I feel like I'm in a healthy state of mind right now, so I might not need to. But for the ones that feel like they need to, I would highly recommend doing that because that was num- one of the number one cognitive therapy techniques that worked. So, uh, yeah. Like, subscribe to this video. Keep on following. Um, sometimes I'll be more upbeat than I am than today. Today, today was a heavy topic, so that's just the way things go. Um, I am reading a book right now called the seven habits of highly effective people and that's what my next episode is going to be about i'll be going over dependence to interdependence and independence and things like that so thank you for joining me goodbye